I think we'll have a few more weeks of the honeymoon phase once she chooses her VP. But I do think they'll do a joint interview mm. together because yeah. then she has a friend. Mm. She has someone who can help her get through the comments and her word salads and kind of a partner. Mm. Well, we well, will get the DNC right after. She'll do the salad. He'll do the entree. <laughs> exactly. I just want to point out that Chris LaCivita, who's running the Trump mm -hmm. campaign, says that his sources tell him uh, Shapiro's out. Really? Uh, that it's Waltz. So that Waltz. would... Okay, so Waltz it's probably... Just, would, Waltz every, is just as progressive as Bernie Sanders. It's, it's, and it, that actually... Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the, in the Democratic Party want a moderate. Right. If she picks him, these are two very progressive individuals. Well, her right. path also needs Pennsylvania. And you would think if they really want to win, then, then they would have that. But me and Steve were talking about this off air. I think the concern, which is, this is sad because it should be a matter of principle, is that a lot of their voters are worried about Michigan. Mm -hmm. And if those voters won't necessarily vote for Trump, but they'll stay at home or vote third party. And I think that's the reason why he's, if, if they decide not to pick him, it would be because of that. And you talked about honeymoon. Is the honeymoon over? And the AP had a reporter out yesterday saying, it looks like with this economy cratering like this, the honeymoon could indeed be over because it comes to the reality of, of what you're investing in, where your 401k is, where your pension uh, is, uh, is sitting down. Uh, the Dow is down 2.6%. NASDAQ, at the end of the day, down 3.4%. S&P down uh, 3%. They hope for somewhat of a rebound today, but uncertainty is everywhere, especially up to those job numbers on Friday, mm -hmm. that there were, three day, there were three loser days right prior to that. At some point, you have to admit, we got to take action because perhaps the most uh, indicative of where things are going a year ago, we were at 3.3%. Now we're at 4.3% unemployment. Still historically low, mm -hmm. but nowhere is the, the, the direction is heading. And it has to change what you talk about, uh, number one, at your convention mm -hmm. when you're coming up, when you talk about success. And it has to talk about what you're doing now right. with inflation and everything else to address this well, issue. Typically, uh, before a candidate hits the big primetime stage, there's a series of vetting. Uh, they have debates. Nine have months of vetting, primaries. Uh, they go through the ringer so they're prepared for the big boy stage right. when they have to go against the other party. That didn't happen with Kamala Harris, and we're learning more and more and more about where she stands. Mm -hmm. Stephen Moore was on Sean Hannity last night and said that we may have the most left-wing candidate ever. Watch. If you look at the major presidential candidates over the last 30 or 40 years, and that includes people like, remember, Michael Dukakis and Walter Mondale and Hillary Clinton and John Kerry, I have to say that I think Kamala Harris is the most anti-business presidential candidate in your and my lifetime. I mean, this woman has endorsed one policy after another that have, would be absolutely ruinous to our economy. As you mentioned, doubling the capital gains tax, taxing unrealized capital gains. The one thing you, you left out, Sean, is don't forget, she is on record as being against uh, modern oil and gas drilling. She calls fracking. You know, 75 percent of our energy day today comes from fracking and horizontal drilling. My hypothesis here, uh, Sean, is that, let's face it. Over the last two weeks, uh, Kamala Harris has had the most amazing honeymoon period from the media. You'd think were, he were, she were Mother Teresa, and all of a sudden her poll numbers go up. And I think a lot of investors around the country and around the world said, holy cow, this woman can actually be elected president. And I think that caused a, a, a complete panic. A AOC said we should listen to, uh, we should, our tax rate should be 70 to 90 percent. And when Kamala was asked about that, she agreed with yes, her. Yes, she said, did. We need to listen to that. Right. Um, if she picks Walsh, he, he was in favor of higher minimum wage. So if you own a business, Stephen's right. If you own a business, this is not your candidate. It's terrifying. Well, You're right. And, and particularly right now when everybody's thinking about the economy, you know, and, and of course, as uh, former President Trump has uh, referred to in his true socials, all the food costs more. Everything costs 20 percent more than it did when he left the White House. And so ultimately, we need to hear more from Kamala Harris about the economy and her view. And, you know, for the next 90 days, uh, for the most part, the Republicans are going to treat her like the incumbent. And so anytime there is something big, like a potential war in the Middle East or the economy starts to tank, 
They've got to ask her about it, and she's got to say but something. She doesn't have to say anything. We know her record. And you know what, Ansel, you're absolutely right, and she's getting away with it. Exactly. Right. So uh, let's go back. The, the good thing is we had a VCR uh, leading up to this, and we were taping a lot of different remarks. The year was 2017. Uh, <laughs> it and, was a Betamax back then, wasn't right, it? Right. You're right, Steve. Uh, my mistake. We'll correct that for the uh, West Coast when we re-air the show. Um, in 2017, uh, Kamala Harris has said some interesting things through her career. And little by little, we get these nuggets being dredged up, one of which is her view on something that is, a, is radioactive now, the word woke. She embraces it. I don't know what's changed because she doesn't tell us what's changed, but just remember what she used to think. We have to stay woke. Like, everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. It's unbelievable. I mean, this is the person that is leading the Democratic Party. You know, they could have had a candidate that could explain mm -hmm. issues, that could have run on this, even if they wanted a progressive agenda, someone that could actually go there to rally the base. The part that I hate about the honeymoon, for, every candidate gets some type of honeymoon, mm -hmm. but, but she hasn't done anything mm -hmm. to deserve the honeymoon. She hasn't had some policy agenda that is rallying Americans. She hasn't had this stunning speech like Barack Obama did at, at the 2004 uh, DNC convention. What, what is her moment? What is the thing that got voters to vote for? And then I remembered she didn't get a single vote. Right. She and has that a, is the problem. She has right a capital here. D behind her name. She's a Democrat. So yeah. the media is going to love her no matter what. They're so excited that finally they have a candidate that can run against Donald right. Trump. They were worried when they had Biden in office that mm -hmm. they were definitely going to win. They knew they would, I mean, lose. They knew they would lose. But this is a lady who wants high taxes. She talked about defunding ICE, defunding the police, decriminalizing illegal immigration, buying your, making you give your gun back. She'll give you money, but mm -hmm. you have to give your gun back. Eliminating private health care and banning fracking. Right, right. but when you look at that soundbite that we just saw, and Brian set it up perfectly, the question for Kamala Harris today... What do you think? <laughs> ...is, the question is this, how, are, are you still woke? Uh, how woke do you want to make America going forward? Or did you, like everything else that was announced last week, have you essentially come up with a new explanation for why you're against all that stuff? Yeah. yeah I and used to caused, be woke, now I'm not woke. And what caused the change? Like, what suddenly yeah, well, I made evolved. you evolve on... And well, remember... Uh, She's Bernie Sanders like is now that. saying that Joe Biden is, has been the most progressive president, and she's supposed to be even more progressive than him. So I got one hint on Sunday. Senator Murphy, like some of their sending the surrogates out to explain the change. One was when it comes to fracking. Senator Murphy told uh, Jackie Heinrich, "He goes, why is he for? Why is she for fracking now?" She goes, "Oh, they've gotten better at it." Right. It's safer. Mm. Oh, that's right. They finally figured right. it out. It's cleaner. And tell me what, I was like, okay, so tell me what's so much better about fracking today. It's so much safer yeah. and fantastic. Yeah. Right. So I can't wait for these explanations. I, 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 just, I just get a kick out of the media. They still haven't learned their lesson. I mean, they anointed no, they Joe learned. Biden, and they went out there, and he embarrassed you guys, just embarrassed you guys. And now you guys are doing the same thing uh, with Kamala Harris, and there's going to be a big moment, mark my words, where she's going to crumble under pressure, and you guys are going to be in the same boat well, right, again. Lawrence, right now, she is completely encased yeah. in bubble wrap because she's not talking to anybody. This is part of their, th you know, she is joining the presidential race so late in the cycle. This is just part mm -hmm. of the strategy. Keep, you know, expose her to the public as little as possible, and let's see what happens. Just a thing on bubble wrap, I much prefer that than those little uh, small styrofoam things. I mean, he ends up oh, all over the house. I hate yeah, then I got to put him, pour him into the bag, and yes. then you got to break up the box. I hate those. You know oh, what I'm talking? The, the, yeah, the little styrofoam. Oh, peanuts. Please, and, bubble wrap. Right. If you're shipping something to me, bubble wrap. I agree. I agree. I don't want the little little foam things. And yeah. Peanuts. Wow. And all speaking, over the floor. Speaking of Betamax. Christmas time, dad gets all of us a beta machine. We're like, we want a VHS, we want a VHS. We go in, in the morning, unwrap, it's a beta machine. Right. Like a year later, we're still at Blockbuster trying to find some, <laughs> something <laughs> that we can watch. Because right. there's only one wall at Blockbuster for beta with maybe 10 is options. Is it bad that I don't the know what a beta is? is? Beta uh, is better. What is it a was beta? Like a, beta was, was invented by Sony. It was a more, uh, it was a higher end, better quality 
uh, tape machine. It's all coming back. But hold on, yeah. it was probably on sale. Oh, My so dad's like, yeah. "Here's yeah, yeah, yeah. the VHS, here's the beta. We're I'll getting the beta." Well, yeah. Yeah. If we're going to talk about Betamax, we might as well uh, open uh, a can of worms with uh, mahi mahi. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought mahi mahi. He said mahi mahi was shark. And I'm getting yelled at on my email. Yeah, it is, it's a dolphin-like fish, yeah. but not dolphin. No. So right. if I said dolphin, it would have been worse. Correct. But it's not a shark. So don't catch a shark and say, great, my mahi, right. like I would have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for bringing up the one argument yeah. I had on my honeymoon. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.